Okay. So in this class, I'll be explaining to you what it means to own a business. And based upon that, what does it mean to own the stock of a company? It's essentially the same thing to own the stock or the shares of a company. Uh, it's just to own a fraction of that company. And uh, so let me uh, use Johnny's pizza um, again as an example to illustrate um, the upside, the reward of a business ownership or stock uh, ownership. And together with that, the risks associated with uh, business ownership, including the ownership of shares in publicly traded companies, for example, like Google. Okay, it's mm -hmm. um, this whole thing will be very, very sort of a uh, um, focus on the on the essence, of, and it will be built upon um, a lot of uh, um, assumptions that were sort of oversimplify the actual scenarios a lot, but will allow people um, of your age to actually understand the essence of business and stock ownership, okay? Okay. Uh, again, if you don't understand whatever I'm trying to explain to you, just interrupt me and so that um, you will not feel like you are left further and further behind. All right, I will. Your okay. audio is glitching. I still don't know how to um, sort of uh, uh, make the uh, PowerPoint work better, but one of those days I'll figure out. So to run your own business, right? Whether it's a law practice or a pizza a restaurant um, or Google, uh, you need finance, you need money, right, uh, <laughs> first, right? So let's go back to the sweet hometown of village of South Mountain, right? Yeah. Okay. So remember the journey which to um, operate to own a pizza restaurant, right? Yeah. Remember he has, he, he he needs one thousand dollars because Michael, the current owner, demands that much. Michael is about to retire and move to Florida, and he said, "Johnny, you want a pizza restaurant? I'll sell to you a thousand dollars." Right? Again, you know, we have this yeah. last example. Johnny had one hundred dollars, and Johnny has to borrow nine hundred dollars from Mr. Bankers, uh, who is the CEO and only shareholder of a bank of South Mountain. Remember, he put $5,000 in to own the bank, right? Yeah. Okay, and then, you know, so Johnny um, will pay the principal of $900 back in 20 years or $45 a year. Remember that example, right? I do, yeah. Okay, good. So this is, this is like, you know, the, um, I, I try to build, you know, um, the lectures upon one another. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day we can write a book about Johnny and the store. <laughs> no, about about you know the stories of South Mountain. Okay. Sure. You can so use it as a practice yeah. book, like people learning. Yeah. You know, in last lecture I stopped, and then we just assume Johnny's business will succeed or fail, right? He will we succeed. No. <laughs> it's just like anything, right? There's no no guarantee, right? It is uh, scary. So, so we, we did not really go into his um, business, right? Now let's assume that we go into oh. his business, right? And, yeah. And we're going to analyze the income statement of Johnny's Pizza restaurant, right? So the mm -hmm. uh, income statement usually starts from, that's what people call top line. Top line means how much money he makes, right? 
and then yeah. go down, you know, his the money he makes and then expenses he has to pay, including to Mr. Bankers, right? Mm -hmm. And his employee and utility company and his vendors who gives him the flower, uh, the floor, what, how do you pronounce that? To, to make and other ingredients. Flour? Yeah, to, to make pizza, right? Right? Okay? Yes. Okay, so, and after everything is paid off, and then he will have a profit. That's why people say bottom line, because it's the bottom of the income statement, okay? Mm -hmm. Got it? So when people talk about a business, they talk about top line, bottom line, that's what they refer to, okay? Uh, do you hear me, or is my audio, I think my um, audio is coming late for you. I'm, I hear you fine. Okay, that's okay. good. So now let's go back to, let's say, 1930s, 1920s, because we are about to talk about the Great Depression in the next oh. section, right? So remember everything multiplied by 1,000, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, want to go to today's reality, right? Um, yep. So going back 1920s, I suppose, um, you can pay uh, two cents, I remember, two cents to buy Wall Street Journal, okay? Today um, it's $6, okay? That's called inflation. Damn. Which I explained to you before how, about how interest compounds, right? Yes. And inflation also compounds, right? So, but now at one cent, at a slice of pizza, right? Okay? It's about all. Or oh, one cent, uh, how, how do you, how do you, how do you, um, a big slice of pizza, right? And I, yeah. how do you call that, Sophie? It's like a, a like pizza pie? Slice, huh? A pizza pie? A pizza what? A pizza pie. A pizza pie, you know, entire pie, right? Entire yeah. pie today costs you about $10, right? Um, if you go to really cheap one, I know yeah. the cheapest one in town for us is eight, 50 last yeah, time so I roughly roughly speaking about ten dollars right a pot right so everything i do you know you know when it comes dollars and cents um unless it does not make sense just assume multiplied by a thousand right so it's ten dollars you know a pie or here one cent a pie right Okay, yeah. 1920. Okay, so Italian immigrant Johnny sells 200 pile of pizza every day. Okay, to South Mountain, Maplewood, and Short Hair household. And then not just people. He's who, hustling. It, it, it's just not people who in the in the in the hometown knows Johnny's pizza. Johnny is just you know not enormously successful. Uh -huh. People from Newark come to buy his pizza. Okay. Wow, so, his work ethic is off the chart. So, so suppose he sells 200, you know, pies of pizza every day, he will make $2 revenue every day, right? Damn. Not too bad, okay? So that's $730 each year, you know, being first generation, hardworking immigrant, you know, we go to work every day, okay? <laughs> wow. Forget about weekend holidays or even Christmas, right? Okay? <laughs> so now, Johnny has bills to pay, right? Yes, okay. he does. Okay. So, um, fortunately, back then, a lot of people own their business, including the real estate. So he does not need to pay the rent. Okay? Mm -hmm. But rent now is the most expensive thing, right? It depends on what kind of business, right? So, I mean, if you rent a farm, I don't know. Let's not go into farm business in America. Okay. So, so, but he, remember, he borrowed $900 to buy the pizza restaurant in the first place, right? Yeah. So, and he need to pay interest of $45 to Bank of South Mountain, right? Mm -hmm. So, in the first year, he, that's for the first year, and for, for every year, he need to pay $45 of principal back to the bank of south mountain right hello yes your, okay. your audio is out a little bit oh, don't worry so he also need to pay 
for raw materials, ingredients, and right and utilities. So you you know, PCR cost probably a lot of uh, whatever energy people use back then and now to you know to to make pizza, right? So suppose two hundred dollars a year, right? Yes. And, and he also has to pay his employees, right? You know, yes. which includes himself, his wife, and his little son, Ronnie, right? Okay. Remember mm -hmm. those names, okay? <laughs> Johnny. Johnny, Ronnie. Let's call his wife Rose, Rosemary, okay? Rosemary, like Rosemary yeah. Pizza or Margarita Pizza. Okay. So. He, uh, he, he needs to pay them $150, okay? And those are, you can look at this way, those are the money they would otherwise be able to make if they work for other people, right? Yeah. Are you with me? Okay. I am sorry, mom just yelled okay. at me. <laughs> oh, don't worry. So in total, uh, he has four hundred forty uh, dollars expenses, right? Mm -hmm. So before tax, he has two hundred ninety dollars of profit. Got it? Unless John sends his money to an offshore account to evade the tax. <laughs> I mean, for small pizza restaurant owners who don't have the money to hire expensive <laughs> corporate lawyers and accountants. That's not gonna happen, right? So, I mean, maybe Johnny will hide some amount of income from the federal government, right? And underpay his tax. Yeah, I mean, people, a lot of people do that, right? But let's not get into that, okay? <laughs> Just assume yeah. Johnny is a law-abiding, you know, honest citizen, okay? Okay. So, is he a citizen or is he just an Italian immigrant? Did he take a citizenship test? <laughs> that's not, that's beyond the point, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, let's say roughly he pays $40 tax. Back then, people don't pay that much tax, okay? Okay. Okay. So, he takes home $250 profit. Okay? Not too bad, right? Nope. For somebody who put in a hundred dollars into the business, remember he only put in a hundred dollars. He used borrowed money to Yeah, wow. He can he essentially take a gamble, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll I'll soon show you if the business doesn't work out how his restaurant and his house will be foreclosed. Okay? No, not Johnny's okay. house. <laughs> So, so this is a, a gamble of, of your own skills and your uh, an overall outlook of the economy and how much your neighbors really will keep their promise to buy your pizza, right? Yeah. Right? So it's a gamble. So if, if, if everything works out, right, and, and in four years, right, he will have enough money just from the profit, right? Forget about the, the salary he has made, right? Yeah. From his own business, the profit to buy another house, right? Mm -hmm. So in 40 years, Johnny will own 10 houses. He will be a small capitalist, right? Wow. Right, he landed class. I mean, not enormously successful, but relatively speaking, he will be the halves of, of the society, not the half nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Got it? If, if the whole thing works out, right? Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, this is, of course, a very oversimplified sort of skeleton sort of a scenario of what could happen to Johnny's business, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. So you have too many words on one slide. I'm sorry? You have too many words on one slide. I know. I usually write incomplete sentences. I do not like other people who write incomplete sentences, even in PowerPoint presentations. And I try to speak incomplete English sentences because I cannot follow a lot of people when they do their PowerPoint presentation in speech or in writing. Okay? So. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's why I'm a woody lawyer. So now, 
this business has really worked out for Johnny, right? Yes. And he paid a decent price for it. He paid, remember, $1,000 for it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe under the old management, remember Michael who went to Florida? Maybe Michael only made $100 a year, right? Rip Markle. Michael, the, the yes. buyer owner of, of you know, the, the pizza restaurant. But Johnny Make it had Michael. been... Huh? Sorry. But Johnny has been, his recipe from grandma is just so much better, okay? Mm -hmm. And maybe he has more pleasant personality and, you know, people just like him more, more than Michael, okay? <laughs> so, so anyway, now, there, so this is, now, when you go out and buy a business like Johnny did, right, how much yeah. do you pay for the business, right? That's, that, that's the question. So how much do you pay, okay? Okay. So in, in finance, right, whether it's public trade company like Google or IBM or United Airlines or Facebook or Microsoft or, or your next, you know, the street corner pizza restaurant, right, or Costco, mm -hmm. right, any business, right, uh, there's something called price earning ratio. That means how much price you pay for the business or a fraction of business, right? Which is a share of, of the company like Costco or IBM, right? And how much money the whole company makes or how much money the company could allocate to each share of all the stocks the company has issued, got it? Mm -hmm. So, in the case of Johnny's Pizza Restaurant, Johnny paid a thousand dollars for it, and Johnny is making two hundred fifty dollars each year, right? Good for Johnny. So, under Johnny's management, the price earning ratio is four. Got it? Mm -hmm. And if Johnny is doing a good job, Johnny should be able to sell a restaurant like right away for $2,000. So Johnny can make $1,000 right away if another person is willing to buy his restaurant for $2,000, got it? Wow. That's the beauty of small business. Some people like Johnny put $100 in and then in a few years, they sell their, they sell their business and, and, and they just need to pay Mr. Bank $900 back and they keep all at 1,000, you know. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Yeah. And, and, and so he, he, he gets $2,000 uh, from the new buyer, right? And then he pays $900 and buy them less than $900 to a bank of South Mountain. And then he keeps in his pocket more than $1,000, right? For his mm -hmm. initial investment of $100, right? Are you with me? Yes, I said yeah. So, but that's, you know, that's why a lot of small business um, people, you, you look at them, they did not go to Harvard or Yale or, or UC Berkeley, but they, they, they do much better financially than, 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 than your daddy, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, so that's called price earning ratio. It, um, and for a big corporation, it's, for example, it, uh, that I'll get into that soon, okay? So the, remember his company right now is, you know, for him, he, what he paid is essentially price earning ratio of four, earning under his own management and operation of the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. But if Michael only make $100 a year, then Michael has sold the business for 10 P, the, the price earning ratio of 10, got it? Got it. Okay. So now, now what keeps Johnny up in the night? What makes Johnny lose his sleep? You know, in good time and his inner demons and fear of being forgotten. <laughs> Let's not get psychological. Let's just stay to the money, okay? So oh, so suppose suppose you know 
the village of South Mountain has only one big employer, right? Sometimes it happens, right? Like in yeah. Pennsylvania, in, in other part of our country, sometimes the entire um, huge community only has got one uh, large employer, for example, General Motors, right? Oh yeah, General. If General Motors shut down, shuts down its operation in that neighborhood, a lot of people will not have income. Okay. Yeah. So suppose you know something bad happens to the overall economy of the village of South Mountain. Okay. Okay. People no longer feel so optimistic about their future. Okay. Okay. And they no longer go to go buy pizza. You know. No. Got it? Or, or they don't buy as not, much pizza. They I'm, start cook. They start cook. No, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're sadder, you buy more pizza. That assumes you have money, right? If you don't, you say, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to just, you know, uh, cook some rice and, and, and eat some vegetable, okay? Just to save money, okay? Ew, okay. Okay? I mean, that's the reality of life, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? So economy goes bad, or other things happen, or maybe there's an epidemic. People just don't want to go to a pizza restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's going on right now, right? Yeah. So he, he used to be able to sell 100 pies a day. Now he only sells, you know, he used to be able to, he used to sell 200 pies. He only sells 100 pies today, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm making things simple here. The price may also uh, have to come down, but let's still assume he's able to sell it for one cent a piece, right? Yeah. So Johnny is making one dollar a day uh, sales, okay? Or $365 sales a year, okay? Mm -hmm. But remember, Just because he makes less money does not mean he owns the bank less money, right? That's true. A, a contract is a contract, right? Once it's signed, it, it's legally enforceable until Johnny is bankrupt, okay? Mm -hmm. So Johnny still needs to pay $45 at the end of the year to the bank as interest, right? In, yeah. Let's assume it's still the first year, right? Mm -hmm. And then he need to pay the principal $45 back, whether it's first year, or second year, or third year, right? If the economic crisis hits, right? Mm -hmm. Johnny now does not need to pay $200 of raw material and utility anymore because he needs to make less pizza, right? Yeah. In, in microeconomics, we call this kind of cost variable cost. Okay? Costs okay. that will vary depending on the production scale, depending on the scales of your business, depending on how much product or your service you sell to people, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but it's not totally proportional because you still need to pay utility. The lights need to be on, right? Yeah. Uh, and you, the oven needs to be warmed every day, right? No, he can heat it up with his breath. <laughs> okay. So he needs to pay his employee, right? And maybe he can pay himself and his children and, and, and his wife, Rosemary, less, right? But, but once business reaches certain scales, your whole family members are not enough to support this operation, right? To man or end or woman the operation, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So now Johnny has $365, $365 expense, okay? He is just breaking even, right? Yeah. Getting by, right? Making enough money uh, for as if he were working for other people, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and if there's one bad month or one bad quarter or one bad year or worse quarter, worse month, worse year, right? Johnny will get a call from Mr. Banker, why? Because he owes him money. And he doesn't have the cash to pay Mr. Banker, right? 
Ooh. Mr. Banker. Mr. Banker. Johnny. Got it? So yeah. that's the risk of owning a business, right? <laughs> that if the expected cash flow does not become reality, but all the expenses are there, right? And could not be scaled yeah. down quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Proportionately or even more, right? Then you are in, yeah. you're underwater, right? So yeah. this is a kind of a nightmare, the worst case, worst case scenario or, 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 or bad scenario, right? Keep people like Johnny, the like business people, up in the night okay it's not the yeah. demands of back childhood okay <laughs> yeah okay but you know before it becomes so bad right because before yeah. it becomes so bad everybody actually in the first case scenario right mm -hmm. when business is doing well everybody envies johnny because we, oh. we go back we go back to the good case right when when okay. the good time when he sells 200 pounds of pizza every day right he makes 250 dollars a year and you know everybody it, if you look at this slide right you will understand you know why everybody envies johnny right okay i thought this johnny, was a nice supporting community where we were happy for success i'm sorry I thought this was a very happy oh. community. Did I did I record this whole conversation so I could upload to YouTube <laughs> after talking for so long? Okay, I think it's recording, but I don't know for sure. But anyway, if if I'm not recording, we'll do this over again. So, so everybody emphasizes Johnny because Johnny made two hundred fifty dollars each year out of one hundred dollars investment, right? Yeah. Did you record the whole thing? I don't know. Um, let me see. Wait. Let me check. It'll show if you were. Oh, you can hear. Yeah. It is you are. recording. Okay. Good. Yeah. It says recording in the top right corner for me. Okay. Let me. I pause. can hear George. <laughs> Can I see George? Let's let's pause. To uh, how do I pause? Uh, no, no. Upload George with the YouTube video. I bet everyone. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Let's go on. With... Hey George, can you stop crying? Can you see George? No, George is outside. So bring him in here. No, no, no. We have you know some time. Oh. Okay. So everybody. Everybody envies Johnny, right? Mr. Banker lends Johnny $900, right? But, yeah. but Ms. Banker only makes $45 a year from Johnny's success, right? Remember? Yeah. And that's only 6% of the term, right? Johnny is making 150% of the term on, on, in the first year. Got it? Got it. Yeah. And in the next year, much more. Why? Because he had to couple the, um, let's not get into the technical ways of calculating the term. Anyway, so the neighbors, right? The neighbors envy Bank, Mr. Banker and Johnny, because their $100 at the bank, each of them only makes 1% at the bank, right? Mm -hmm. and, and after all, all of these nine hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Mr. Bankers lend to Johnny. It's 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 the neighbor's money, right? Oh remember, yeah. Remember uh -huh. the, the the banker? You know he he puts only one third of the money into the bank, right? And he's making forty five dollars from from Johnny and you know six dollars from Sophie and all other people. Got it? Mm -hmm. So, and his five thousand dollars is definitely making him much more than one percent, which is fifty dollars, right? From Johnny alone, he made forty-five dollars, right? Yeah. 
And everybody is just like, yeah, maybe we should get into this business, okay? We should not allow our money to sit in a, you know, bank account. Okay? So, they, so they all get the loan. Got it? Uh-huh. So, but, but nobody knows or nobody pays enough attention, you know, to the risks that Johnny faces, right? Mm -hmm. That Johnny may lose his house, Johnny may lose his restaurant to Mr. Bankers, right? Mr. Bankers, you know, may lose his entire bank and his $5,000, got it? Yeah. People only look at other people when other people are enjoying, you know, huge financial returns, got it? Yeah, they don't see the work and struggle and risk that goes into it. Yeah, yes, exactly. That's, that's how occasionally, periodically, people we fail. Go into recession. Okay, now the next slide. Oh. So, um, this is like a, a, a silly, uh, I'm, I'm really going to write a novel one day about this. So, oh, let's say Johnny has an IPO, okay? You know what is IPO? No. IPO is, is the shorthand for Initial Public Offering, IPO, yeah. okay? Of okay. the shares of company. Here, you know, Johnny's pizza number two, okay? Johnny okay. has the first company that, that owns the first pizza restaurant, right? Yeah. Now, everybody thinks, Johnny, you, you are so brilliant. Just why don't you open a second restaurant, right? Oh. We in Newark <laughs> don't borrow money from Mr. Bankers, okay? Okay. We are going to give you money so that you could spread the success, you know, among friends, okay? So mm -hmm. that instead of take home, instead of taking home all these two hundred fifty dollars alone and pay uh -oh. Mr. Banker forty five dollars, right? We are friends, we are neighbors, right? Share the American success, okay? So anyway, the money you got to buy the restaurant from Michael, it's all one money anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, so we are going to buy some shares in your company, okay? We can okay. own this restaurant together with you. This second Johnny's Pizza restaurant, Roman letter two. How fitting. Ah, Three, stocks. Johnny is Italian. We're using Roman letter number two, right? Stonks. Yeah. So Sophie, the lawyer, okay? Dad, do you know how to say stocks in Italian? Stock? I don't know. No, it's stonks. Can you refer to it as stonks from now on? I, I know, I know, I know what's the, uh, uh, what? I know why bankruptcy, the English word, is called bankruptcy. Why? Originally, it's an Italian word. Oh. But old days, if a person, if you're a locksmith or a blacksmith or, or a goldsmith, if you don't have the money to pay you when the debt is due, okay? Your, yeah. creditor, your creditors will come together to your shop, okay? To your workshop. Oh. And they will rubbed you, the bench you, you sit on, okay? They will cut the bench you sit I on. I do not to, believe that. To make your rings, to make your shoes, whatever trade you are in, okay? They will cut the bench you sit on into halves, okay? Okay. The bank is, I think it's the Italian word is like something like bank, but it's the bench you sit on, okay? And um, obviously it means they, they rubbed it into two halves, okay? I do not believe that. And then you are bankrupt. Your bank has <laughs> erupted into two, okay? And people will think you are no longer credit worthy. They will no longer give raw materials to you on credit, okay? That's called bankruptcy. Now let's go back to Johnny's IPO. This so is stocks, stocks in Italian is stonks. Can you refer to that? Uh, no, <laughs> never mind, Sophie. Let's no, instead back. of saying stocks, you just say stonks, please, please. Stocks, stocks, okay. So stonks. let's let's go back to Johnny's happy IPO, okay? Uh huh. 
So, so feel a lawyer or draft the legal document for Johnny's PISA number two, the IPO, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, Papa, me, I draft a few uh, like IPO documents, okay? IKEA? IPO. Oh. <laughs> okay. So okay. that buyers of the stock will understand what this company is about, how the company has been doing financially during the last few years. Understand? Mm -hmm. So accountant Bert Bingy, we call accountant Bing Contest. So accountant Bingy checks jo Johnny Pisa once, books and, and records and, and disclose that to all the villagers, okay? Yeah. Okay, so that everybody knows Johnny is not making up. Johnny has made $250 each year on Johnny's Pisa number one. Can you see what I'm doing on the screen? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay. So don't be naughty. Let's focus on Johnny's IPO, okay? Mm -hmm. So be the lawyer, you can you are supposed to run IPO from legal perspective, oh. okay? Yeah. I used to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. So everybody see, mm, yeah, Johnny reliable, successful, you know, has got grandma's secret recipe, okay? Hey, <laughs> stop that, Sophie. So Mr. Banker, Mr. Banker runs the book. Okay, you know what that means? Mm -hmm. No, you don't, okay? No, you don't. Means, <laughs> <laughs> it means Mr. Banker will keep track of who is willing to buy the shares, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, that means a fraction of ownership of Johnny's pizza number two. Okay, so you may expect people with Georgia cash, right? Remember they have $100 each family deposit at the bank, right? To buy Johnny's pizza number two's shares, right? Yeah. Okay. So Mr. Banker, Sophie, and, 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 and the villagers all buy shares from Johnny pizza number two. Everybody's optimistic about his future success, right? Oh no, it's um, gonna crash. <laughs> You're I'm building up to this in a way that makes me leave. Estimating the risks of a severe business downturn, okay? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we can see in this. Slide. Kind of foreshadowing it here. Okay, got it. But nobody, you say in the 1920s, nobody thinks the stock will go down, the stock market will go down, okay? Okay. So everybody, nobody wants to have saving in cash or bonds or whatever. Everybody wants a, a piece of action. Everybody wants a piece of Johnny's success. Okay, that's as far as you know, South Mountain Village is concerned. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, what is stocks anyway? You know, even a lot of people go to buy stocks, but not everybody understands what it truly fundamentally means, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So to own the shares of companies, to own a portion of the company's business, okay? Yeah. So for example, Johnny, I will get into that in the next slide, okay? So, so if you own one share out of 100 share, total shares of Johnny's Pizza restaurant number two, right? Yeah. Any money, the company makes, the company first needs to pay off its debt, right? The company mm -hmm. first needs to pay its landlord, right? The company needs to pay its employees, its vendors, right? And so whatever money is left after you pay the tax is profit, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have two, $150 profit left, and there are 200, 100 shares, right? Mm -hmm. Each share is entitled to $2.5 profit. Oh. Whether it's distributed or not, legally that's your money in the company, okay? Yes. So what left is belong to the shareholders, okay? 
But so after you put in initial amount of money to pay for the shares of the IPO, you are not legally required to pay more money into the company anymore, okay? So if the company needs more money, the company could, is, could borrow, the company could issue more shares, but you are not required as shareholder to contribute more money. Got it? Got it. Unless shareholders otherwise agree by contract, okay? So now everybody think my risks are limited, okay? My risks are limited to the initial price I paid for the shares from Johnny's Pizza Restaurant 2, okay? Yeah. So now it comes to the IPO. So how do you price the IPO, okay? Meaning how much you charge people for the 100 shares you're gonna issue, okay? So, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So, suppose you pay one hundred dollars per share, so okay? Okay. And you get one dollar profit. Okay. Allocate share to you. The price to earning ratio is one hundred. We we went over price. We I explained to you what is price earning ratio before, right? So that means you have paid too much for your shares. Got it? Oh, got it. Because you can lose this one hundred dollars. The business could go down. You, 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 you one hundred dollar. Your one hundred dollar share will be worth nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you'd better just put one hundred dollars in the bank and get one dollar back. Because given what I explained to you in the first lecture, you know, you not know banks are actually less risky. Because the bank lends to Johnny and, and the bank has Johnny's restaurant and, and Johnny's home as collateral, right? For the bank to totally lose $100 of your deposit is very, very unlikely. Got it? Yeah. Much unlikely Should than Johnny's keep, business. Okay? To Shouldn't you keep all. your money in several different banks though, just in case there's like yes. a failure? Yes. Also, after the Great Depression, the Federal government provide insurance to you for up to a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Even if the bank fails, the federal government will give the people the money they deposit their back up to one hundred thousand dollars for each customer of the bank. So if I deposit two dollars and the bank bait like burns down, can you I get, get two dollars back? Okay, from the federal oh. government. Got it. But if I put three hundred thousand dollars in. And the bank burns down. Am I only liable to get a hundred thousand back? Uh, I don't. I haven't studied the law yet. In principle, originally, that's the that's the legal construct. You get one hundred thousand dollars back. Okay. Maybe like one of those old people who keep all their money under their bed. They because they went through Great Depression, which will be the subject of the next lecture. Okay. Okay. So. So you figure that $100 in exchange for $1 return every year? No, I'm not gonna pay, I'm not gonna buy this stock, got it? It's too expensive <laughs> relative to the future expect return I'm gonna get, okay? I better just, you know, deposit it with the bank, okay? Okay, so now going back to Johnny's restaurant, okay? Okay. So Johnny, pays, you know, only 100 for his restaurant and got 250 back. So he, his price earning ratio is only 0 0.25, but, but he is different. He is the founder of his own Johnny's restaurant, number one, right? Yeah. He breathed life into this company, right? He added value to this company thanks to grandma's recipe, right? The company's business like takes off. So he's different, got it? Got it. Okay, now let's go, go, go back again to Johnny's new IPO, okay? Ooh, Johnny's new idea. Yeah, Johnny, uh, nobody sees the depression coming when everybody's happy to buy shares in Johnny's pizza restaurant number two, okay? Mm -hmm. 
everybody assumes Johnny's Pizza Restaurant tour will make $250 a year because he did it for the first restaurant, right? Yeah. It's just human's psychological tendency to project the future based upon the past. They should have bought Netflix stocks instead. So, so it's decided through, you know, competitive bidding, meaning Johnny, Sophie, Ronnie, and other people in the village, depend, whoever wants to pay the top dollar gets the share, right? We are fighting to the death for these. Yeah, okay. So at the end of, you know, like just a, like an auction, imagine it, right? Yeah. All of the 100 shares of Johnny's Pizza Roman Letter 2, everybody think it should be worth $1,250, okay? Okay. Which is five times of an expected annual profit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, nowadays price earning ratio so is not five. It's 15 or 20. It's very even higher. Got it? But we will not get into that in this lecture. It's too complicated, okay? So just assume, you know, back in 1920s, okay? People paid five times of expected annual profit for Johnny's pizza number two, okay? Are you with me? Hello, Sophie. Sophie, are you there? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I'm here. My phone okay. is dying. Okay, do you better charge your battery, okay? Mm -hmm. So now that means the entire company, before the company is even open, before before business opens, right, is worth $1,250, okay? Okay. And so there are 100 shares, okay? So everybody assume buys one share since there are 100 family. So suppose one, uh, 90, 90 families bought 90 shares from John's company, okay? Second company, okay? Each of them expects that they are $12.50 per share that they paid for, right? Will give them two dollar and fifty cent a dividend each year, year after year, right? Mm -hmm. That's so much better than depositing the like one hundred dollars or twelve dollars fifty cents at the Bank of South Mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Because just one share alone is give you much more than your one hundred dollars, right? One hundred dollars give you one dollar interest. <coughs> One share, twelve dollars fifty cents will give you two dollars and fifty cents dividend each year, right? Mm -hmm. So Johnny gets twenty dollars, twenty shares for free, okay? And that's worth two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. For doing nothing other than lending his name and bossing people around because he's now management, okay? Mm -hmm. He no longer goes to the old van and pick up the customer phone calls, right? He just sit on the board of directors of the company, okay? And he, he doesn't have Ronnie or Rosemary, you know, do the dirty actual work. He hires people now, right? Mm -hmm. But for, for whatever secret recipe that he shares for the rest, second restaurant, he gets 20 shares, okay? Mm -hmm. For free. Okay, this is this is how how IPO works nowadays. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you have some good intellectual property like grandma's, you know, secret recipe, right? People will just give you shares outright. Mm -hmm. Okay, isn't it beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody thinks the price will go higher. Okay, mm -hmm. because everybody think you know at five, at price earning ratio five, this is undervalued. Everybody thinks, you know, everybody thinks once you know New York had so many more people and this business 
we could open a third restaurant, a fourth restaurant, using the money we generate from the first restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, first restaurant for Johnny Pizza number two, right? Mm -hmm. Got it? So this whole thing will be just like everybody will be just sitting home doing nothing and collect dividends, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is before everybody realized in bad Stop. years, John yeah. Pizza could lose a lot of money and could be foreclosed by the bank. Yeah. Or go bankrupt if it cuts money if it does not have the money to pay the vendors or employees, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody may come to Johnny's boardroom, right? Mm -hmm. And take the bench he sit on and cut it in <gasps> half and then no. Mr. Johnny, your company is bankrupt. <laughs> in the good Johnny. old Italian fashion, I'm telling you, we are no longer going to lend any money to your company. We're gonna take over your company. All the inventory is ours, okay? All, all the real estate is ours. We are going to become the owner of Johnny Pizza number two. Who is all, the village, all the villages in South Mountain, sorry. This is our legal right. Understand? Who is we the bank? Does the bank all? Or any creditor who has got those assets as the collateral, okay? Remember how Johnny bought his first restaurant and if his first restaurant fails, right? Mr. Bankers could go to his house and his restaurant and take over the whole thing, remember? Mm -hmm. and, and Johnny, he could capture a lot of upside, okay? If the business succeeds, right? But if the business fails, right, it's the creditor who have got the first priority to yeah. claim all these remaining asset of the company. That's why the creditors were paid less. That's why the creditors were only paid, see, in the case of Mr. Banker's first loan to Johnny, 5%, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of what people in the South Mountain Village ex expects of the 20% of annual dividend, right? Mm -hmm. Because a bank's return is limited to the interest it is legally allowed to charge, right? So the bank say, look, I'm gonna have the first priority over whatever is remaining in the company, got it? So yes, once yeah. the bank takes over a restaurant, people in South Mountain Village wakes up next day, land, they are twelve dollars fifty cents. It's all gone. No. <laughs> okay. So those two lectures should prepare you for the lecture about the Great Depression. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have any questions, Sophie? No. It's pretty depressing, huh? But people do not. The Great Depression. <laughs> No, it's not. When the time is good, like the, in the in the golden era of the 1920s, uh, the gale age, where when the, the Great Gatsby, you know, um, the Great Gatsby, oh, yeah, that that's, was... the novel depicts that kind of heydays of you know uh, high returns of stock market, and everybody, you know, um, happy go merry, you know, lucky go happy, and uh -huh. America was you know, immense in this kind of optimism. And nobody knows, nobody, just when nobody expects the stock market crash. Uh, but there's a one more concept to that, that's, you know, um, margin call, which I'll explain to you in the third lecture. But Yeah, I remember what that is. Based upon those two lectures, you, I think you are ready to understand the third lecture. All right? Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop it.